This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Nottingham, final press conference done. We're two days away from Lee Wood's defence against Michael Conlon. Um, professional like today, there wasn't any smack talk. Is that what you expected? No, uh, didn't really expect, have expectations of anything, to be honest. Um, just knew that it's an obligation that must be taken and uh, it's out of the way and now we've got the way in tomorrow. I asked that because at the launch press conference, the yeah. two of them, obviously, <laughs> there was a lot of things said. So I think people were half expecting that to be to be the same case. Uh, can you just talk me through Lee's mentality and mindset at the moment? Yeah, he's in a great place. Uh, very happy with his training camp. He knows exactly what he needs to do. And it's just a case of going out, going out there on Saturday and executing. Uh, you raised the point about you know people saying it's going to be Lee's power that wins mm. him the fight or Michael's uh, boxing ability. But... You said there we don't know how hard Mick uh, punches in, and as you said about the Kanzu fight, Lee Wood is a much more complete fighter than perhaps people think. So, is it just a, a basic thing that fans always do? They like to do that, don't they? Yeah, it's just dumbing it down, isn't it? It's a very easy thing to do, and it's what people always do. But um, as I said at the end in there, you know, Lee Wood's more than capable of winning on points or by knockout. So. Uh, you know, it was the same with the Kanzu fight. Lee Wood can only win by knockout. He can't beat Kanzu on points. Well, not only did he nearly beat Kanzu on points, you know, very widely, he knocked him out in the last round. So, um, but make no bones about it. As I said up on the stage, I'm sure Mick punches harder than what people perceive him to. And um, so, yeah. Ben. Obviously, uh, a lot of people are also talking about Mick's pedigree coming into this fight. Um, how much of a factor do you think that will be compared to Lee's amateur background? Well, it depends on how we go about the fight, of course. You know, if, if uh, Mick's a versatile guy and a very good boxer, of course, that's why he is where he is and why he's had the uh, achievements in the amateurs that he's had. Um, but Lee Wood's a very accomplished professional. Profe uh, Lee was a very accomplished professional and experienced professional. And, um, yeah, we know what we need to do to, to nullify Mick's strengths and um, nullify Mick's strengths and exploit his weaknesses. Having said that, it's arguably the biggest step up for the pair of them in terms of professional game. Um, would you go along with that? Um, well, the Kanzu was Ring Magazine number three. So I'd say that on paper it was probably a more difficult fight, but in reality, um, Mickey's probably a more difficult fight, so um, I would agree with that, yeah. Now, you said uh, into the lead-up for Josh Taylor's fight that the the crowd, the home crowd, can be a disadvantage and an advantage at the same time, and I think that we saw that, actually, in Glasgow. Uh, we know Lee's going to have some raucous support here on Saturday night in Nottingham, would you say, again, it could be an advantage and disadvantage or not? It's a completely different mentality from Josh and, and Lee. They're two completely different guys, two completely, completely different fighters. I think that a home advantage will be an advantage for Lee Wood here. Um, as opposed to, like you say, my perception of what the home advantage could be for Josh. So, again, it's, it's, it's two different guys and uh, I think this time the home advantage will be an advantage. OK, well, everyone tune in to DAZN this Saturday night for a fantastic fight between Wood and Conlon. Now, Ben, we did a, a long interview on Zoom about the situation with, with Josh and Jack, uh, so I'm not going to dwell on that, but just a couple of things um, that have happened since. My first question about that is, so there's been a lot going on in terms of Josh and his family. How are you as well? Because I'm sure you'd have got some people messaging you and, and saying stuff on social media. So how are you, firstly? Oh, it's part and parcel of the game, mate. I've been the best trainer, the worst trainer, about ten times over. So it is what it is. Um, unfortunately, people have the platform to express their opinions, whether how qualified or unqualified they are. Um, it is what it is. Unfortunately, I do think something needs to be done about it because I'm not talking so much in boxing, but just in general in life. Like, there's a lot of people that are in the spotlight taking their own lives from. Uh, depression and things like that which often comes from people expressing their opinions on, on social media and being able to say whatever they feel like they, they want to say um, without taking into consideration how somebody may feel. Um, do I have the answer for it? No, but it's part and parcel of, uh, of the game and 
this is the first time really jo I've experienced it, you know, with, with the likes of Tyson Fury, who's been through it a thousand times over. Billy Joe been through it a thousand times over. I've been through it a few times myself. So this is the first time Josh has is, is really uh, received some criticism. So it's probably a bit of a shock to the system. He's probably got to make a decision on whether he wants to play the role that they're giving him and be the bad guy or try and let it blow over and, and carry on as the good guy. But we'll have to see. No, you're professional and full focus on this fight with Lee, but you are a human mm -hmm. um, and this fight has come out, uh, come around just after this fight with Josh and the, the aftermath of that. So can you 100% say that in terms of your gym, yourself, the whole Ben Davison camp, um, that it hasn't affected this week and Lee's preparation? No, it hasn't affected this week and Lee's preparation. Uh, you know, the best man will win on Saturday. Uh, no excuses. He's back. He's back. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, it's David Diamante in the background, by the way. It's good to see him here. Oh, brilliant guy. Um, but yeah, Lee Woods uh, hasn't affected Lee Wood, hasn't affected anybody in the gym. The gym is flying. Um, Lee Wood is flying. He's in a great position uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. So, yeah. Also, since we last spoke, uh, the police are going to investigate the result. Uh, what do you think about that? Crime scene investigators scoring boxing fights. Interesting. Ben, uh, last one on this. Um, obviously, Daniel Kinnan advises both fighters uh, in terms of Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall. Um, there's been suggestions on social media from fans saying, you know, it was because of him the, the outcome and the fight was rigged. Uh, so have you got any comment on that? This is what I mean. People can just express their opinions on social media. Like, how stupid is that? He advises both guys. So he wins either way, no matter who wins. Why would he? And how would he even have an impact on who won? Do you know what I mean? They just live in this deluded world. It baffles me. It really does baffle me. I don't know if they've watched too many films or what, but it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. I don't know what can be done about it, but I just I cannot. I don't. I can't see the path of how people come to these conclusions. I really can't. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know. It's ridiculous, though. It's ridiculous. Oh, definitely watch too many films. That's for sure. Yeah, mind-boggling, to say the least. Uh, just to close off, I uh, just want to get your opinion quickly on heavyweight matters. Um, spoke to Anthony Joshua last week. I said, who are you going to fight whilst the Usyk's dealing with the situation? I mentioned Joe Joyce. He said, yeah, why not? Uh, a lot of fans kind of suggesting that it doesn't really make sense for Joshua to box Joe Joyce. So a two-part question, how do you see that fight? And also, if you were advising Anthony Joshua, would you say, you know, kind of don't worry about Joe Joyce for now? Risk versus reward, isn't it? Um, Joshua's in a position again, unfortunately, where everybody's going to have an opinion on whatever he says. So if he said, no, not Joe Joyce, oh, he's ducking Joe Joyce all of a sudden. So he's in a position where he can't win, can he? Um, very, very difficult times, difficult situation. Uh, we don't know how long this is going to go on for uh, in Ukraine. Could Alexander vacate the belts? Um, potentially allow for a mega fight with Tyson and, and Joshua maybe down the line uh, for him to then fight the winner. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there. Uh, but if he has, if the thought is that Joshua and Usyk will fight later on in the year, maybe the, the Otto Wallen fight makes sense, preparing for a southpaw. Um, so I don't know. We'll have to see. OK, and just to close off, I've uh, seen today that Officially, 90,000 tickets have been sold for Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Uh, so, yeah, just your reaction to that. Huge event. Yeah, a huge, huge event, you know. Uh, obviously, Tyson's the A-side, but Dillian's had some great wins and got a good name as well that's helped sell that. Um, well deserved for, for Tyson to have this opportunity to have his homecoming and a huge event in Wembley and a big, mega British heavyweight showdown. I don't think I spoke to you since their press conference where only Tyson obviously showed up. What did you make of Dillian not turning up and, and in general not promoting this fight? I don't know. I mean, usually it's in the contract where the fighter must turn up to certain obligations. Per speed contract though, isn't it? So it's different. Mm. It's a WBC uh, bout agreement. So I'm not sure what it actually states about promotional duties. Well, you know, he's earning a lot of money. 
I know there was talk about uh, some back and forth between the contract before the contract got signed, which left the press conference, actually got put back a week, was left to the last minute, so I don't know if there was things in there um, or a few disagreements about, because it couldn't have been about the money because the money's good for both sides, so I'm wondering if the delay was something to do with these press conferences and not turning up or whatever. Um, do I read anything into it? Not really. What matters is what happens when fight, two fighters step into the ring. I think that if you believe in a lot of the mind games and, and pre-fight stuff, then of course you can have a winner and loser. But if you're not, if you don't really believe in it and don't buy into it, then and you're just focused on your prep preparation. It's not going to have too much of an impact. Ben Davison, thank you very much for your time here in Nottingham. Best of luck with Lee Wood this weekend, and of course Royston Barney Smith the week after. Let me Shabazz the, the week after. Pat or Luke, who's out in March? Luke and Mark. So next week we got Shabazz on the 18th, Royston on the 19th. The week after that we got Pat and Mark on in Newcastle, Newcastle. on the 25th. Busy month for you. Um, yeah, and we'll speak post fight. Thank you for your time. All right. No problem, mate.